Today we're going to be talking about arithmetic sequences and series. And we already know that an arithmetic sequence and series is there is a common difference between consecutive terms. So if you look at your first term, remember a sub 1 means the first term is negative 3. So to get to the next term, our second term, we would add 4. So our second term is our first term plus your common difference. Now your next term, your third term is your initial term plus your common difference twice because we added four once, added four twice. To get to the next term, we take and we have our initial term plus your common difference times by adding four, I add four three times. To get to our next term, our fifth term, we have our common we have our initial plus we add the common difference four times. So now let's come up with a nth term. The nth term is our first term plus the common difference. Now notice the relationship between the number of times that we add in our common difference times by the term number. Notice how this number, the number of times we add in the common difference is always one less than our term number. So to find the value of a term in position n, so any term, the nth term, so for example the 48th term, okay, that tells you that n is equal to 48. We take our first term, okay, n minus 1, times the common difference, okay? This is a formula that you're gonna need to memorize. I'm gonna ask you guys to use these formulas when we're working through problems. Okay, write a rule for the nth term of the arithmetic sequence, which means that we're gonna be using this initial that equation, and we're gonna be simplifying that. Okay, so let's write out what we know. A sub n, we don't know yet. A sub 1 is 6. The common difference is equal to take 14 minus 6, because you would have to add 6 plus your common difference to get 14, so we get that to be 8. So the value of your nth term is 6 plus n minus 1, times by 8. Now I take and I distribute that 8 through and we simplify. Now as I talked about in a previous video, this is a linear function. This would be y equals mx plus b, where 8 is the common difference. 8 tells you that it is a common difference that your um, sequence has. Now we need to find the 41st term. So we plug in a sub 41 is equal to negative 2 plus 8 times 41. So the value of our 41st term is 300. 26. Okay, example two. Write a rule for the nth term of the arithmetic sequence. Remember, our formula a sub n is equal to our first term plus n minus 1 times d. Well, we know what d is. Okay, this piece here tells us a lot. It tells us the value of the 41st 40, I'm sorry, the value of the 14th term is 46. 
So n is equal to 14, and the value is 46. So I plug in. Our first term I don't know yet. Um, n is 14 minus 1 times 4. So we get 46 is equal to a sub n plus 52. I'm sorry, that's a sub 1. So a sub 1 is equal to negative 6. Now we plug in. So our nth term is negative 6 plus the common difference, well times n minus 1, times the common difference, which is 4. And then we simplify that, and we get our nth term is negative 6 plus 4n minus 4, which is going to be negative 10 plus 4n. Find the arithmetic means of the sequence. So you're finding here 4 arithmetic means. This is what our book uses its terminology. It means I have four blanks in between negative 8 and 22. So if you think about it like this, the value of 22 is equal to negative 8. Make this, think of that as your first term. How many times do I add my common difference? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Think of this as your second, your third, fourth, fifth, sixth term. So what I do is I've added the common difference five times. So solving for d there, we get d to be equal to 6. So now that I know that, <clears throat> we can write out our sequence, negative 8. Now I add 6 to that, and I get 2. I add 6 again, and we get 4. I add 6 again, we get 10. I add 6 again, we get 16. I add 6 again, and luckily we get to 22, which would fill in all those blanks correctly. Okay, to find the sum of a finite series. Remember, finite means it has an n. There's an nth term. So to find the number of terms in a finite series is the number of terms times the average of the first and last term. Okay, so think about it. That's actually pretty easy to remember. The number of, the sum of the n number of terms is n times the average of the first and last term. Okay, so remember our formula. We need to find the sum of the first 40 terms. That's the number of terms times the first term plus the 40th term all over 2. So let's think about what we already know. We know a sub 1 is 50. What else am I looking for? I need to know n. n is 40. I need to know a sub 40. a sub 40 is equal to, use that formula for the nth term. So your first term plus n minus 1, so that's 40 minus 1, times the common difference. What's my common difference? To go from 50 to 42, we're subtracting 8. So this simplifies to negative 262. Okay, so now it's just a matter of plugging in. The sum of the first 40 terms is equal to n, which is 40, our first term, which is 50, plus the last term, which is 262, all over 2. And we simplify that, and that is 
Okay, next example. Find the first three terms of an aromatic series for which we have the first term, we know an nth term, and we know the sum. So again, let's look at what we know. Okay, let's look at what we know from this formula. Well, we know what the sum is, so we know s sub n. We don't know n, but we know the nth term. So what I could do is I could plug in 129 equals n, because we don't know how many terms this is a sum for, but we know the value of the first term. We know that nth term divided by 2. Solving for n there, we get n to be equal to 6. Well, that tells us a lot. Okay? That tells us that this is really the sixth term. So use your formula for the nth term. to now solve for the common difference. So we know the value of that nth term is 29. We know the value of the first term is 14. We know that n minus 1, since n is 6, n minus 1 is 5, d. So I solve for d to get 3. So I need to find the value of the first three terms. So our first term, oh, hey, they give that to us. The second term, all I have to do is add 3 to that to get 17. To get the value of the third term, I add 3 to that again, and we get 20. Okay, sigma notation. This is important. This is another way of writing sum. Okay, it's just a fancy now way of writing sum. So what that means... Okay, you have some function that's in terms of some variable k. Down here, they like to use k or i a lot, okay? I don't know why mathematicians do that. It's just one of those crazy things, okay? So you have the first value of k. So k starting from 1 to 12, and then you have some function here. Remember, this function looks like an arithmetic formula. So I know that I could find the sum of the first 12 terms. That's what this means, the sum of the first 12 terms. Well, what is that? That's going to be 12 times your first term. When I plug in 1 for k, we get 6 out. When I plug in 12 for k, we get 50 all over 2. So that's how we could find the sum of these first 12 terms. by just using our sum formula, okay? So this sigma notation is a fancy way of saying sum. The bottom number is the number that you start plugging in, the number at the top is the number that you stop plugging in, and you're finding the sum of each one of those. Okay, so finding the sum of the series. Recognizing right away that this is arithmetic, okay? And like I was talking about, sometimes we use the letter I there. It's usually I and K or N. Okay, so we need to find the first term by plugging in the bottom number 1. So I have negative 10 minus 3, that's negative 13. We need to find the 15th term, because that's the last term we plug in. It's negative 10 minus 3 times 15. That is going to be a negative 55. Remember the formula for the sum. Sum is equal to the number of terms and the average of our first term and our nth term. So the sum of our first 15 terms is 15. Our first term is negative 13. Our next term is negative, or our last term, I apologize, is negative 55 over 2. Simplifying that, we get negative 510. There are your lesson questions, and please make sure those are submitted on time.